welcome back to GCU Softball Stadium on the campus of Grand Canyon University right now. Come on, get out, get out! Welcome back to GCU Softball Stadium on the campus of Grand Canyon University here in Phoenix. Jack O'Hara here with you alongside Luke Larkin for the nightcap of today's doubleheader as the Syracuse Orange take on the Grand Canyon Antelopes. So the Lopes will start things off here in the batter's box. You may ask yourselves, why are the Lopes kicking things off? That's how this tournament works. It looks like Syracuse is the designated home team for this nightcap. The Lopes the designated visitor. Yeah, a little bit odd there since they are playing at GCU Softball Stadium. But looking to get it kicked off here is senior Sierra Smith. Cut on and missed. Smith, one for two against San Diego State. En route to a 9 nothing victory. Ryan Denhart with the complete game shutout. Five innings of scoreless softball. Smith started things out with a leadoff walk in the first inning in the game against San Diego State. She quickly falls behind the count 0-2. She fell behind 0-2 against Marissa Marino in the first inning earlier today. Worked a leadoff walk. Kicked off a three run first inning for the Lopes. As the 0-2 offering. It's up and outside, count one and two. Well the Lopes are looking to ride off that momentum from the first game. They played very, very well. Able to draw their Record even two and two. They had three in the first, one in the second, five in the fourth. Smith skies that one in the air to left. Play is made for the first out of the inning. So one up, one down here for the Lopes. The left hander Alexa Romero on the mound for the Orange. Well, and one of the huge things, Jack, for the Lopes and for Ryan Denhart was that she was able to get that run support so incredibly early that she was able to pitch a lot more confidently and able to get that complete game. First pitch taken in there for a called strike. Torville looks to continue her dominance here in this young season, two home runs on the year. As the 0-1 from Romero. Cut on and missed, strike two count quickly, no balls and two strikes. Romero, the Colorado native, looking to pick up her first win of the season. Torville looks to dig herself out of a hole here. 0-2 pitch from Romero. Fastball check swing, did she go? No, she did not, says the first base umpire. So Torville able to stay alive, checks her swing there, count moves to one and two, that pitch at her eyes there. As she looks to put the ball in play here with one out and nobody on. Romero gets the sign from her catcher, one, two pitch, lifted in the air, will stay on the infield. As the play is made there by the shortstop, two up, two down here. Alexa Romero looking to have early success here against the Lopes. As Shea Smith will dig in, Shea Smith three hits earlier today against San Diego State. Picked up an RBI. And as she looks to give the Lopes a two out base runner. Fastball clips the outside corner, count 0 and 1. Lily Bishop, who did not play in the day cap of this doubleheader, gets the start tonight, batting eighth. As that pitch is up, count moves to 1 and 1.
one one pitch outside count moves to two balls and one strike so the Lopes now 500 two and two looking for their third win of this young season again the designated visiting team against Syracuse Syracuse the designated home team here in Phoenix on the road as that pitch is cut on and missed fastball high and outside Smith chases the ladder on that one as the count moves to two balls and two strikes So Romero looks for a dominant one, two, three first inning as Smith looks to give the Lopes a two out base runner. Fastball misses inside and the count runs full at three balls and two strikes. Yeah, good eye there, just able to lay off that one as it was inside. Looking to keep this one alive here. Smith who reached base safely and all four plate appearances earlier today will reach base safely to kick things off here in the nightcap as she reaches with a two out walk. Well that's very, very stereotypical of the senior. Lots of confidence, lots of patience. Was able to fight through that one, bring the count to full, and then sit on that ball four. Really great at bat there. And that'll bring up the first baseman and cleanup hitter Kaylee Dietrich. Dietrich picked up a hit in three RBIs, picked up a huge two-run double in that fourth inning. It was a five-run fourth inning for the Lopes as that pitch is cut on and missed, strike 1-0-1. Oh, Dietrich looking to do some damage here early. Again, Lopes with three runs in the first inning, a run in the second inning, five in the fourth in the day cap against San Diego State. Looking to ride that momentum here in this nightcap against the Orange. 0-1 oh, offering. Fastball, hits the outside corner count, nothing and two. Romero coming right at these lopes that are hot after a good win. She's doing a good job quieting them down here at the top of the first. O2 offering from Romero, clips the outside corner for a called strike three and that'll do it here in the top of the first inning. So a scoreless top of the first for Romero and the Orange as we head to the bottom of the first here in Phoenix, scoreless game between the Lopes and Syracuse. It's time for the upcoming schedule brought to you by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Women's basketball returns home on the 14th to take on UMKC. Men's volleyball faces Pepperdine on the 15th and baseball looking to open their season against Wichita on the 15th followed by a matinee game against Ball State on the 16th. Catch every game here on the home for GCU Sports, GCU TV. And it looks like it's gonna be the right-hander, Lexi Coons on the mound for the Lopes. This will be her second appearance of the season. She did have one appearance in the uh, nightcap of the doubleheader against the Charlotte 49ers two nights ago. Well, and she got the win in the, uh, the first game of that doubleheader as she came in in relief of Brianna Aguilar Bobo. You know, she came in, was able to bail her out and carry that team all the way through to the win. Six strikeouts in that first game against the 49ers and five and a third innings pitched. Only allowed two hits. She went an inning and a third, allowing one run, one walk in the night portion of that doubleheader against the 49ers, looking for more success as the Lopes look to complete the sweep on this Saturday afternoon. Now let's run down Syracuse's lineup here. It'll be Tehran, Hansen, Holmgren, Kaiser, Acevedo, Cesar, Mayer, Martin, Maceolek and Mayfield. Terribly sorry about butchering some of those. First pitch fastball in there for a call strike, count 0 and 1. So Tehran looks to get things going here. A dominant top of the first inning from Alexa Romero. 
as that pitch is ripped sharply. Fielded there by Smith, could not get a handle on it. It's gonna be an infield single for Tehran. So quickly, a leadoff base runner for Syracuse as they look to get rolling here against the Lopes. No outs, runner on first, and that'll bring up Hansen. Center fielder, number six, Alicia Hansen. Tehran takes her lead off first. Alicia Hansen in the box, takes a fastball up, count one and oh. So Smith able to keep it in front at third base, unable to get a handle on the ball. As Tehran looks to turn that play into a scoring opportunity. 1-0 offering, fastball, ripped in the air, foul down the right field line. It's gonna get out of play, count moves to one and one. Well, Lexi Coons having a bit of a difficult act to follow after Ryan Denhart pitched that complete game this afternoon. Fastball, chopped to second. There's one, unable to get the play at first. Nice play made there by Torvilla. She gets the force out at second base. So one out runner on first now. As that'll bring up Holmgren for Syracuse. Syracuse coming a long way for this one, Luke. Yeah, definitely a hike for them. Pitch misses inside, count 1-0. and Bryce Holmgren, a rolling Iowa native. As she has a career 382 batting average here at Syracuse as she takes that one on the outside corner, count moves to 1-1. One and one. Comes into the day with 149 career hits. As she looks to pick up 150 here in the bottom half of the first inning with a runner on first. 1-1 one, one offering in the dirt. And a brilliant throw from the Lopes catcher, Dietrich, as she nails the runner out at second base. So two outs now, nobody on, as that changes the whole complexion of the inning. Two outs, nobody on as Coons looks to get out of this one unscathed. Yeah, the throw was in time and Shea Smith doing a good job dragging that down and getting her in time. Fastball misses on the inside corner count, now moves to three and one. So if Holmgren can get on here, it'd be two outs runner on first instead of Runners on first and second and one out. So like I said, changes the whole complexion of the inning that last play. As the 3-1 pitch misses outside and the count is a ball four. So she reaches first base. Two outs, runner on first now as Coons looks to get out of this one without allowing any runs. Pitch count at 10. So no damage done as of yet. Her first walk allowed right there to Holmgren. First pitch in there for a called strike as it clips the corner count. Owen oh one snap throw the first base, not in time. A oh one from Coons is lifting the air deep to left. It is high, it is far, and it is gone. A two run home run for Kaiser. And just like that, it is 2-0 Syracuse here on the bottom of the first. There was no doubt about that one, Luke. Yeah, no doubter off the bat. Made real good contact on that one up and in the zone. That one was well out of the park here, clearing the screen in left field. Not the way the Lopes were looking to start this one.
So Kaiser putting Syracuse on the board at first in a big way. A tape measure, two run blast, two nothing Syracuse. As Acevedo digs in here against Coons. Fastball misses outside, 1-0. and And like I mentioned before, that caught stealing at second base proves to be a huge factor as that three run, potential three-run home run turns into a two-run home run from Kaiser. Off-speed pitch there misses, low, 2-0. and And a bit of adversity here for sophomore Lexi Coons to overcome the right-hand pitcher looking to escape this one, only letting up two. Now she quickly falls behind three balls and no strikes on Acevedo. The Florida native looks to get on with two outs as get a brief mound visit here as she looks to calm Coons down on the mound. 3-0, two outs, nobody on, 2 nothing Syracuse. Yeah, Kaylee Dietrich doing her part as a catcher to come out and say, you know, calm down, we got this one. You know, sure there's two up there, but we just got to take this pitch by pitch and get out of it. We'll see if Acevedo is turned loose here on 3-0 as the pitch is in there for a called strike. So she holds back, count moves to three balls and one strike. Again, Syracuse looking to add to their lead. Yeah, that one just clipping that inside corner. Three one offering. Off speed misses up, and it's a two out walk. So after the two run homer from Alexis Kaiser, two out walk handed out to Acevedo. The shortstop, number 11, Nelly Caceres Mayer. And that'll bring up Nelly Casares Mayer. A short stop for the Orange. Coons gets the sign. First pitch. Flips the outside corner. Count quickly 0 and 1. So after a great showing against San Diego State earlier today, the Lopes quickly find themselves in a hole here tonight, 2-0 Syracuse as that pitch is in there for a call strike count quickly, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, finding a way to get herself ahead in the count. It'll be an 0-2 to Casares Mayer, runner on first, leads off the pitch. On the outside corner, misses count moves to one and two. Alexa Coons, pitch count up to 16 here in the bottom of the first. Has allowed two walks already. And she delivers the one two pitch. Fouled straight back and out of play count remains one and two. Tony Martin waiting on deck, the left fielder. One two offering from Coons, fastball, inside corner misses, count evens up at two balls and two strikes. So Alexa Coons having a difficult time putting away these Syracuse hitters at the moment. As she delivers the two two offering, fastball on the ground to second, fielded there cleanly by Torville and she Retires the side for the final out of the inning, but not before. Syracuse gets on the board. Alexis Kaiser with a two-run home run. It's 2-0 Syracuse as we head to the top of the second inning right here on GCU TV. Uh, he's That's time you watched that, uh, it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little uh, shopping. Wait, and no truck. 
Uh, his hustle plays, he's got a rebound of like that. He could we'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. Steals. I don't have time today. Uh, but Hope we're going with like four doors this time. And, uh, Ooh, of course. Uh, I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. He's got to be our blue. best defender. What F-150 super crew? Nico. He's got a rebound. All done. Shot from home, buy from home, we deliver. He's got to step up. And to be quite honest with you, From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. He's time. He knows exactly how we're supposed to play. Another guy that's been in big, big games at Illinois is Mike Uh We're going to have rebound tonight. If we can throw the basketball, the woods, the left pitches, 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 the left Feel the thunder in the heart of Phoenix. GCULopes.com. And Damari Mills said he had the big plays. All right, back here on GCU TV. Lopes look, they get two runs back here. Two run home run again from Alexis Kaiser in the bottom of the first inning. Lopes look to bounce back against Alexa Romero with tonight's keys to the game. Yeah, our Sanderson Ford keys to the game. First, they need to capitalize on their momentum. They did a really good job in that first game, winning 9 nothing. a complete game from sophomore pitcher Ryan Denhart. The Lopes looking to keep that going. Holland and Smith especially going three for three. Holland coming up to bat here. She had three RBIs and Shea Smith with two RBIs of herself on her, by herself, except Expect big things from them as that one finds a spot there on the left field. So Kaylee Holland, who had a terrific first game this afternoon, picks up a single on the first pitch fastball from Romero. So just like that, the Lopes are in business. Lead off runner on here with nobody out. The left fielder, number four, Maddie. As we take a look at the Lopes starting lineup, we did not get around to it in the first inning. Leading off at third base, was Sierra Smith, Savannah Torville batting second at second base, Shea Smith at shortstop batting third, Kaylee Dietrich behind the dish batting fourth at catcher. Tonight's designated hitter, hitter batting fifth is Kaylee Holland as Maddie Dowdle will be batting sixth, Taylor Kay in center field batting seventh, Lily Bishop getting the start tonight after getting the day cap off. She's at first base batting eighth and rounding out the Lopes batting order in right fielder is Gianna Nicoletti. And that pitch is in there for a called strike. Count evens up at one and one here. Battle picked up one hit in the day cap of the doubleheader. And as the one one offering from Romero is sliced in the air to right field, that ball's gonna drop in for a base hit. Going from first to third is Holland. And how about that? The Lopes looking to get right back in this game. Runners on the corners and nobody out. Yeah, just like that, get a blooper from Holland. You get a nice hit from Dowdle. And just like that, you get runners on the corners, no outs. So Romero, who had an easy going top half of the first inning, finds herself in early trouble here in the second, trying Center to fielder, protect a two nothing lead. Taylor, Taylor K. K. Digs in, picked up a hit in an RBI in the first game as well. And as the corners come in for the Orange, again looking to protect their newly 2-0 lead. Okay, squared there, takes it back as the fastball misses outside, count 1-0. Mayfield in at third. Acevedo playing about halfway as Romero delivers the 1-0 pitch in there for a called strike. Okay, squared yet again, pulls back again as the count evens up at a ball and a strike. Again, just looking to put the ball in play here as the Lopes look to get on the board. Romero gets a sign, 1-1 one, one offering. Slapped up the middle. As the play 
is made there by the shortstop Cesaris Mayer. As the runner moves up to second base, so now runners on second and third with one out. So it does not bring home a run. Your first baseman, number 27. Although Dowdle does Lily move up to second Bishop. base. So Lily Bishop in her first at bat of the afternoon looks to drive in two runs with a base hit here. Looks to get her ball club right back in this one as the infield plays about halfway. Fastball misses low and outside, count one and oh. Bishop looking for her first hit of the season. And she'll get it right here as the Lopes are gonna tie this ball game up. Bishop will stay at first. It's gonna be a two run single for Lily Bishop. Picks up her first two runs batted in. And it's a brand new ball game here in Phoenix. 2-2 yeah. here in the second. Her first hit in a GCU uniform comes at the perfect time, is able to rip that one down the third base line and bring in two. So Bishop now with one hit and four at bats, raises her batting average to 250 on the young season as a quick mound visit on the mound here for the Orange. Yeah, and there you saw Bishop with a big old smile from ear to ear. Ball placed beautifully down the left field line to score two. And we'll see if they can add to that lead as Gianna Nicoletti will dig in, also picked up another hit. As it looks like we're gonna have a pinch runner for Lily Bishop. For as Rachel base, Hammonds 14, will take over. Looking to provide a little bit more speed over there on the base paths. Now batting, the right fielder, number 20. Yeah, Lily Bishop doing her Gianna part, Nicoletti. getting the two RBIs. Hammonds will head out, try to continue this as she is a little bit more speed able to work those base paths. And Gian Gianna Nicoletti at the plate is known for her speed. We'll see if she tries to slap one in play as she squares to bunt, pulls back. First pitch misses low, count one and oh. So Alexa Coons has backup as her offense gets her right back in this game with two runs here on the top of the second. After that Alexa Kaiser two run home run as that pitch is cut on and missed. Throw down to second base is not in time as the ball trickles into center field. No advancement from the runner. So a stolen base for Rachel Hammonds as the Lopes have another runner in scoring position. One out runner on second base. And it looks like Rachel Hammonds is gonna be called out on the play for interference. Well, an unlucky call there for the Lopes. I'll change it to Two outs here. That pitch is cut on and missed. Nicoletti looking to slap the ball yet again as the count evens up at one and one. Again, changes the whole complexion of the inning, Luke. As we saw in the bottom half of the first inning, Syracuse could potentially be up three nothing on that home run by Kaiser. Instead, it turns into a two run shot after the caught stealing attempt. Hammonds Interferes here, trying to steal second base. Could have been one out, runner on second, turns into two outs, nobody on, and a one-two count here on Gianna Nicoletti. Romero sets and delivers the one-two pitch. 
ripped down the right field line, but foul. Yeah, good contact, but just ahead of it. That one will fall foul. One, two, pitch. Lifted in the air, foul. We'll see if it stays in play. It will not, just out of the reach of the catcher, Masalik. The count remains one ball and two strikes. Nicoletti really battling up there as she fouls off yet another pitch. As the count remains one ball and two strikes, Romero's pitch count now up to 26 through the first inning and two thirds. He has one strikeout, has only allowed one walk thus far. Three hits and two earned runs here, both coming in the top half of the second inning. One, two. Ripped on the ground a second and it's booted there by the second baseman, Tehran. So reaching will be Gianna Nicoletti as she provides some speed over there at first base. Two outs, runner on first base. Yeah, took a bit of a hop, knocked off her wrist and able to trickle into right field. A hard hit ball there from Nicoletti. She's been hitting the ball hard all day long. As Sierra Smith will dig in, back to the top of the batting order for the Lopes. Smith reached first base with a walk back in the first inning. As Romero deals the first pitch, fastball misses up, count one and oh. Just like in the first game of this doubleheader, Sierra Smith reaching base on a walk after being down in the count, no balls and two strikes. She did it to lead off the first inning against San Diego State, she did it to lead off the first inning here tonight as that fastball misses low, count quickly 2-0. and oh. Torville waiting on deck, the Lopes would love to get her to the plate here in the top half of the second inning. As the 2-0 offering, Smith Pops it up in the infield foul territory. It's going to stay in play for the first baseman, Acevedo. And that will do it here in the top half of the second inning, but not before the Lopes type the score on Lily Bishop's two-run single. We will go to the bottom half of the second inning. It's all tied up 2-2 between Grand Canyon and Syracuse. Well, don't miss the men's basketball game that everyone is talking about. The Lopes take on the New Mexico State Aggies tonight at 7 p.m. right here on GCU TV. Make sure to check that one out. It's gonna be very, very exciting. And you have five minutes to go do that. Yeah, well, the, the beauty is we broadcast on YouTube, so what you can do is you can pull up both games, drag them to se separate sides of the screen, and. Enjoy both softball and men's basketball at the same time, all from the comfort of your living room. That's a great plug. Won't lose viewers that way. Exactly, exactly. I was thinking we're promoting the men's basketball game. We're gonna lose a ton of viewers come seven o'clock. Oh, this, this is shaping up to be quite the exciting game. So we're tied up two a piece, you know. And of course, who doesn't want to hang out here with Jack O'Hara and Luke Larkin. No, I don't know. That's I don't know. Well, frankly, my, that's my parents answer, have probably yeah. turned off the TV and you know, they're watching the basketball game now. So, I know all they because of your advertisement. The basketball game. Yeah, all because of your advertisement. <laughs> so, you have nobody to blame but yourself for that. Yeah, pretty much. But we will begin play now <laughs> in the bottom half of the second inning. 
again, 2-2 two -two game. Lily Bishop tying things up with a two-run single, her first hit and first RBIs of the season. As Alexa Coons comes back out for her second inning of work. Allowed that two-run home run to Alexis Kaiser. Tate measure blast over the net in left field. Tony Martin digging in, her first at bat of the ball game. Left fielder for Syracuse. As Coons delivers a first pitch, breaking ball. Misses low for a ball, one and oh. Pitch clips the outside corner, count moves 2-1-1. One and one. So despite that two-run home run from Kaiser, Coons looking sharp yet again in her third appearance of the season. Only hit allowed tonight was that two-run home run from Kaiser. As that ball is laced down the right field line, it's going to trickle foul out of play. Oh, well, good contact there, but behind it, as it goes down that first base line foul. Like, like you said, Lexi Coons looking very good here. Oh, she looked very good Thursday afternoon in relief of Brianna Aguilar, Bobo. One two offering is left up as the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. We'll see if she can get this one going in her direction as the Lopes getting her some run support and drawing it back to even. After only a one run performance in yesterday's loss against Oklahoma, the Lopes bats have shown up all day so far here today. As that pitch in the dirt misses, count runs full at three balls and two strikes. So Tony Martin looking to give the Orange a leadoff base runner here in the bottom half of the second inning. Again, to reiterate, the Orange, the designated home team here in tournament play as Tony goes around on that fastball up and in for strike three. So Coons picks up the strikeout to start things off here in the bottom half of the second. Yeah, a good fastball up and outside, able to get her swinging. So that'll bring up Michaela Michelic. The orange catcher digs in for the first time tonight. First pitch from Coons, fastball. Right on the outside corner count, quickly no balls and one strike. Clips the outside corner yet again. Count quickly, no balls and two strikes. So Coons finding that outside corner to her liking as she looks to pick up her second consecutive strikeout right here as she sets to deliver an 0-2 pitch. So that ball jams the orange catcher. Fielded there cleanly by Lily Bishop. Steps on the back for the second out. So two up, two down here for Coons. And she looks for her first one, two, three inning of the night. Yeah, much more dominant here in the bottom of the second inning than what she looked like in the bottom of the first. Nice one, two, three inning here would give momentum back to the Lopes after their two run Top half of the second inning against Alexa Romero. As that pitch misses just outside, count one and oh. Coons looking for the call there as she quickly falls behind here. As Leilone Mayfield digs in. Mayfield, the third baseman for the Orange, takes that fastball on the outside corner for a strike, count one and one. A 
It'll be the heart of the order for the Lopes in the third. It'll be Torville, Smith, and Dietrich as they look to chase Alexa Romero from this one. Chase Marino pretty quick against the Aztecs earlier today. Just two innings of work, allowing four runs on five hits. Two one delivery. Taken outside and Coons falls behind three and one. So Mayfield looking to get on. As Tehran waits on deck, this will round out the batting, or batting order for the Orange. As a 3-1 pitch, fastball ripped into the air, deep center field. There is Kay to make the final out of the inning, a quick 1-2-3 inning for Alexa Coons. So we will head to the top half of the third inning. Grand Canyon 2, Syracuse 2. Don't go anywhere here on GCU TV. member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Back here on GCU TV, we're all tied up as we head to the top half of the third inning. Alexa Romero still in their third inning of work. She's allowed two earned runs on four hits thus far. As one strikeout has only allowed one walk as she comes into this inning with a 36 pitch count. And she faces the heart of the Lopes order. Yeah, it'll be Savannah Tourville, Shea Smith, and Kaylee Dietrich here to bat for the Lopes. Tourville, the power of this lineup. Tourville popped up to short back in the first inning against Romero. Looks for her first hit of the night as she takes that fastball up and in count one and oh. It'll be Tourville, Smith, and Dietrich. Anybody gets on, Kaylee Holland will get another turn here in the top half of the third inning. 1-0 offering from Romero. And that one is gonna be worn by Torville. And she gets plunked right in the back, she'll take first base. So quickly a leadoff base runner here for the Lopes. As Savannah looks to shake that one off. So runner on first, nobody out, and that'll bring up Shea Smith. Smith walked in her first at bat. Looks to reach base yet Shea again. Smith. Well, not the way you hope to get on base, but she's gonna take it. She walk off that squared hit. As Smith drills that one in the air. It is high, it is far, and it is going to be caught at the warning track. Nice play made there by Bryce Holmgren. As Torville trots over back to first, so Smith putting a charge into that one. Didn't quite have enough. As Holmgren makes the play at the warning track. Looks like we're gonna have a quick mound visit yet again. As Alexa Romero is getting hit hard here in the top half of the third. 
Gives up two runs on three hits in the top half of the second inning. Starts this inning off with a leadoff hit by pitch to Torville. And came inches away from allowing a two run home run there to Shea Smith. And yeah, she's just missing her spots just by a little bit here at the top of the third. They're trying to calm her down, get her going in the right direction yet again. The Lopes, of course, looking to try to keep her a little off kilter here. Catcher, number five. So that will bring up the catcher, Kaylee Dietrich. Dietrich 0 for 1 in this one, struck out looking in her first plate appearance. Took a fastball on the outside corner as she fouls that one straight back, count quickly 0 and 1. So the Orange do have a right-hander warming up in their bullpen, as this could potentially be Alexa Romero's final inning of work. Fastball popped in the air. Just staying in the infield. As a play will be made there by the shortstop and there are now two away as Romero looks to get out of the inning without allowing any runs. The designated hitter, number That'll 12. bring up the designated hitter, Kaylee Holland. Holland. Holland one for one, picked up a single in her first at bat. And she takes a fastball outside, count quickly 1-0. So Romero's pitch count up to 41. Again, has only allowed four hits thus far in this one. Again, the leadoff hit by pitch to start things off here in the top of the third. Shea Smith putting a charge into one, hitting a fly ball deep to the right field warning track. As that pitch is popped up, foul play. Play is made there by the first baseman Acevedo and that'll do it here in the top half of the third inning. So no runs on no hits, one runner, one runner stranded and we will head to the bottom half of the third inning. It's Grand Canyon two and Syracuse two here on GCU TV. Who will carry the word open in Ethington Theater this week? It's a deeply moving play that depicts the atrocities of World War II while telling the story of bravery and friendship. Get your tickets at the Ethington Theater box office or online at gcu.edu slash carry the world. Again, as we reiterated before, a lot of stuff going down on campus here yeah. this month at Grand Canyon. It's very busy here in the spring. The fine arts and production always does an excellent job. Athletics picks up. Obviously men's basketball going on. Baseball about to start, softball in their opening tournament here. Men's volleyball is on the road. It's a very exciting time, especially for us broadcasters. It seems like we don't get much of a break. No, we're not getting any days off, Luke. Not one. But you gotta love it. You no, know, exactly. Get to hang out with the guys and talk about sports. And of course, we get to spend time with our wonderful viewers. For those of you tuning in for the softball game here against Syracuse, Grand Canyon and New Mexico State tied at three. They're about two minutes into their game. Yeah, there you go. At the GCU Arena. So stay so here. Stay tuned and for, uh, watch the, uh, the softball game and we'll keep you updated on what's going on in the basketball game. Top of the order here for Syracuse as that first pitch misses outside 1-0. and It'll be Tehran, Hanson, and Holmgren. If anybody gets on Alexis Kaiser, will bat here in the bottom of the third. Again, the only hit for Syracuse thus far, a tape measuring two-run blast off the bat of Kaiser in the first. Cleared the left field screen against Coons as that pitch is roped in the air to right field. Easy play made there by the right fielder, Nicoletti. So quickly one away here in the bottom half of the third. 
Again, only hit allowed by Coons was that two run home run by Kaiser. Since then only one hit allowed, two runs, two walks, one strikeout. As she is set to deliver her 39th pitch of the night. So that fastball is roped in the air to right field. Play made out there again by Nicoletti. So two up, two fly balls to Gianna Nicoletti. And there are quickly two away here in the bottom half of the third. And Nicoletti doing a good job out there in right. Able to track the first one to her right and then that second one to the left close to the first base line. So again, Coons looking for her first one, two, three inning of the night. As Holmgren digs in, takes a fastball on the outside corner, count nothing and one. Yeah, that one just catching the outside corner. Good pitch placement. Again, Kaiser waiting on deck. As the 0-1 pitch is delivered, fastball misses up and away. Unable to get the call there, did Coons as the count moves to one and one. A similar spot there, just a little bit more outside. So Coons. Gets a sign from Dietrich, 1-1 one, one offering. Fastball ripped, foul down the left field line. So Holmgren a little late on that one as the count Moves in Coons' favor, it's one and two here. Two outs, nobody on, we're in the bottom half of the third inning. Two two game here in Phoenix between the Lopes and the Orange. And the Lopes looking to improve to three and two after a nine nothing shutout win today. Against San Diego State. Breaking ball misses low in the dirt, count moves to two and two. And the 2-2 offering is roped in the air to left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. So a two-out base runner for the Orange as Bryce Holmgren picks up a base hit. And that will bring up Alexis Kaiser. We'll see how careful Coons pitches here to Kaiser. We'll see if she gets the opportunity as we're going to have a mound visit. Yeah, pitching coach will come out, have a conversation. Looked like they're... Was some action in the bullpen. Just a coaching visit for now. Lexi Coons has pitched 44 pitches in two and two third innings. She's faced 12 batters, allowed two hits, one of which being that two run blast. So Kaiser will dig in here with a runner on first and two outs, like we've mentioned half a thousand times. Syracuse's two runs coming from that two run blast from Alexis Kaiser back in the bottom half of the first inning. So we'll see how Coons deals with her here. Fastball on the outside corner taken for a called strike count quickly, nothing in one. Yeah, the Lopes finding themselves in a very similar spot here as in that first inning. Runner leads off first, 0-1 pitch. Kaiser takes it low and in. Count evens up at a ball and a strike. It is now 13 to 12 New Mexico State with about 15 minutes left in the first quarter. So like we promised, Updates for the men's basketball game here in the women's softball game here on GCU TV. As the 1 1 offering misses outside, count moves to two balls and one strike. Kaiser looking for her pitch to hit. Coombs did not want to fall behind here as she can ill afford to fall behind three and one here as the 2 1 offering is swung on and fouled straight back. Kaiser just missing that pitch. 
as the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Kuhn's doing what she can to not pitch something hittable here. So Holmgren, lead off of first, 2-2 two -two offering, breaking ball left up in the zone and the count runs full at three and two. That one is so hard to lay off for Kaiser. Coming in, it's outside, but it's right up in the zone. We'll see if Coons challenges Kaiser here with the fastball on the 3-2. She does, she rips it to short, play made there by Smith across the diamond. What an athletic play from Smith as we will head to the top half of the fourth inning. It is still tied between the Lopes and Syracuse. Don't go anywhere here on GCU TV. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. And as an RN, you delight in sharing it. But there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere, so you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back here on GCU TV, another scoreless frame from Alexa Coons as we head to the top half of the fourth inning. Alexa Romero still on the mound for the Orange. It seems that the right-hander warming up in the bullpen has taken a seat. So Alexa Romero looks to complete a scoreless top of the fourth inning. Again, a 2-2 tie between the Lopes and the Syracuse Orange. And Romero is allowed four hit, or two runs on four hits. She's pitched 43 pitches and faced 14 batters. It'll be the six, seven, and eight hitters for the Lopes. Maddie Dowdle leading things off. As the first pitch fastball, this is outside count one and oh. Dowdle picked up a hit in her first at bat as she singled softly to right field back in the top half of the second inning. Come around and score on the two run single from Lily Bishop. As the 1 0 offering misses low and away. Count quickly, two balls and no strikes. It'll be Dowdle, Kay, and Bishop. As the Lopes look to take their first lead in this one. Again, we're down 2 0, tied up the game in the top half of the second inning as Dowdle is quickly ahead in the count against Romero. Three balls and no strikes. So not what Romero envisioned starting things off here in the fourth. Again, nobody warming up in the bullpen for Syracuse. Yeah, just falling behind here in this at bat. 3-0 and is the count. So 3-0 pitch to Dowdle. Fastball misses up. So a four pitch leadoff walk to Maddie Dowdle. We'll see if the Lopes can capitalize as Taylor K digs in. It's just Romero's first Kay. walk, or excuse me, her second walk Taylor of the Kay. night as Kay digs in. Kay grounded to shortstop in her first at bat in the second inning. With runners in scoring position as she lays down a beautiful bunt. Moves the runner into scoring position. That's how you draw it up in the books, folks, as Taylor Kay trots back to the dugout and is met by her teammates. Yeah, that's a great play there capitalizing on that short game. Play down the box and advance the runner, exactly like you draw it up. 
So everything going according to plan here for the Lopes so far here in the top of the fourth. We'll see if Lily Bishop can drive in her third run of the game as she fouls off that fastball straight back, count 0 and 1. First pitch swinging against Romero. Again, Bishop with that two run single down the left field line scoring both Holland and Dowdle back in the second inning to tie this ball game up at two and we stand here at a 2-2 tie as of right now. 0-1 offering from Romero. Fastball roped in the air, fairly deep center. Play will be made there by the center fielder Hansen, tagging from second and moving to third safely. It is Dowdle, so runner on third, two outs. We'll see if the Lopes can get in this run. So Dowdle reaches base on the four pitch walk, gets moved over to second on the sacrifice bunt and gets moved over to third on the fly ball out from Lily Bishop. So Gianna Nicoletti gets a chance to drive in a run here. Or maybe I spoke too soon. And it looks like Taylor Olson is gonna pinch hit here for Gianna Nicoletti. So this erases the lefty-lefty matchup, or lefty-lefty matchup. As coach Pitching counters with a right-handed bat. Number eight, Taylor Olson. Olson picked up a hit in the first game. As Lily Bishop favored in the start here tonight over Olson. We'll see if Olson can come up big here for her lope, says the first pitch offering fastball misses low, count one and oh. Romero's pitch count up to 50 now. As that fastball hits the outside corner, count evens up at a ball on a strike. Dowdle leads off of third, 1-1 one, one pitch. Cut on and missed. Count moves to one and two. Olsen chasing that high fastball. Tough one to lay off as the count moves to one and two. Romero looking to pick up just her second strikeout of the night. As she gets the sign from her battery mate. One, two pitch, fastball on the outside corner for a called strike three and that'll do it. So we will head to the top half, or excuse me, the bottom half of the fourth inning. Still a 2-2 tie between the Lopes and Syracuse right here on GCU TV. Well, Jack, we've talked about all of the things happening here on campus with various sports starting, the fine arts and production program at the Ethington Theater. So if anyone's planning on coming to visit campus this spring maybe come out for a baseball game or a softball game or catch the end of the basketball or volleyball season why not stay at the GCU hotel features comfortable rooms a resort style pool and the Canyon 49 grill they've got a great barbecue burger it's one of my personal favorites it's the perfect place to stay when coming to GCU book a room today at GCUhotel.com yeah, you can't complain about that hotel. Great service, great rooms, great pool area, and of course the Canyon 49 Grill. Yeah, they've got a couple big fireplaces out in that pool area. It's a very cool place to just hang out, whether it's with friends or family. Very relaxing, just minutes east of campus here. You gotta know, when I can't think of anything beat on campus, you bet I'm hopping on that bus, taking that shuttle over to the hotel and going to Canyon 49. Great, great dinner options, great lunch options. It's a great place to be. Yeah, I know we take advantage of it with our offices being over there. You know, we get the commentators together, try to do it weekly. You know, go out there and enjoy it. Number three, so Alexa three, Coons Alex back Alex out Alex. here, bottom half of the fourth inning. She went five 
innings and a third in her last start. We'll see if she can match that here tonight as the first pitch offering just misses outside, count one and zero. Oh. So Acevedo leading things off. Walked in her first plate appearance as she looks to give Syracuse a leadoff base runner here in the fourth. 2-2 two -two game, like I said. This account moves to two balls and no strikes. Scoring coming from a two-run home run from Alexis Kaiser in the bottom half of the first inning. Clearing the left field net. Out onto the Grove territory here at GCU. Two-run shot gave the Syracuse Orange a 2-0 lead before the Lopes came right back. That pitch in there for a call strike. Count three and one. Excuse me, two and one. Scoreboard lied to me here at the softball stadium. Well, not only that, but since the Lopes are designated the visitors here, it says, you know, it's them as the visitor and it's the Orange as the Lopes. <laughs> it's a bit confusing for us. That pitch fouled off and the count moves to two balls and two strikes. So after quickly falling behind 2-0, and oh, Coons comes right back, count evens up in 2-2. Two two. Like I was saying, Alexis Kaiser with that two-run home run to put Syracuse up 2-0, but the Lopes came right back, a two-run game-tying single from Lily Bishop as she picked up her first hit of the season and her first at bat here tonight against the Orange for the Lopes. It'll be a 2-2 offering to Acevedo as that breaking ball misses in the dirt. Couldn't get her to chase on that breaking ball. And the count runs full at three balls and two strikes. Right three as that pitch clips the inside corner. So one away here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Again, Coons looking to continue her dominance. A yeah, great pitch there. Finds that inside First, uh, corner. Nelly Caceres Mayer. First pitch, breaking ball, clips the outside corner, count quickly, nothing and one. So Cesaris Mayer grounded out to second base in her first plate appearance. So that pitch just misses on the inside corner. Great placement on that fastball from Coons, unable to get the calls. The count moves to one ball and one strike. Tony Martin waiting on deck. Is that pitch inside? Misses two and one. Inches away from clipping the batter there is. Again, Syracuse looking for a base runner. After that two run shot in the first inning, Coons has settled down in this one. Two straight scoreless innings in the second and the third. Looks to do the same here in the bottom half of the fourth as she delivers the two one pitch. Misses low in the dirt and the count moves to three balls and one strike. And it was a very tidy second inning for Coons. And then in the third, she was able to get out of some trouble. So 3-1 offering here from Coons. He's already allowed two walks as that ball is chopped sharply to short. Smith has it, throws across the diamond, and makes the play. 6-3 put out, so two up, two down here in the bottom half of the fourth. As Coons looks for the 1-2-3 frame. And that will bring up the left fielder. Tony Martin. Martin struck out swinging in her first plate appearance as she takes a quick fastball on the outside corner. Count quickly, nothing and one.
It'll be the top of the order for the Lopes. Sierra Smith, Savannah Torville, and Shea Smith due up in the top half of the fifth inning. As that pitch misses low, one and one. They look to bat with a 2-2 tie here in Phoenix. As both Romero and Coons are dealing at the moment. One one pitch in there for a called strike count moves to one and two. So we'll see what Coons goes with here on the one two pitch. Is like going with her off speed stuff in her arsenal. We'll see what she gets Martin here with. One two pitch ripped right at Toraville at second base and that'll do it. So Tony hits it right on the screws there, but right at Toraville, an easy one, two, three inning for Coons as we head to the top half of the fifth inning. It's Grand Canyon two and Syracuse two right here on GCU TV. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. <laughs> yeah! Do you want to be on Ask GCU? Twitter raffle. Twitter raffle. Tweet us your questions, and the person with the best question is going to get featured on the next episode with the crew. My dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> People don't like us very much, it seems. Yeah, Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. Back here on GCU TV, Lopes look to take the lead. It's 2-2 as we enter the top half of the fifth inning. And Luke, I gotta say I'm a little surprised. Alexa Romero still in this one. Bottom, or in the top half of the third inning, it seemed like she was gonna get pulled. A right-hander warming up in the bullpen. Completed a scoreless frame and then countered it with a scoreless top half of the fourth inning as she looks to do the same here in the top half of the fifth. Yeah, you know, she's Pitched 54 pitches, faced 18 batters. She has two strikeouts and two walks. She's allowed two Three runs on four hits. But she gets the three. nod from the dugout. Sierra so she'll continue Smith. this one as Sierra Smith steps up to the plate. And Sierra still looking for her first hit of the night. 0 for 2. As she rips that one right back at Romero. Oh, a nice slap slap hit but right at Romero like you said able to just step to her right and catch that one on the backhand joking around with her teammates there that is uh, no joke if you've ever had that experience uh, that is a impressive play screaming, for sure screaming line drive coming right at your face able to make the play Quickly one away after one pitch as that pitch misses outside count one and oh. So Savannah Torville again also looking for her first of the night. She's 0 for 1. Popped up to the shortstop back in the first, was hit by a pitch in her last at bat. And she looks for the 1 0 offering from Romero. Fastball up, count quickly, two balls and no strikes. So hitters count here for Torville as she looks to get on. Shea Smith waiting on deck. Just missed a two-run shot in her last at-bat. As the 2-0 offering, fastball is popped in the air. Shallow left field. Martin is there. She'll make the play. Torville just got underneath that one. Yeah, it was up and in the zone, but just caught the bottom of it. Didn't make very good contact, and as a result, popped out to center. So quickly two away as Romero looks like she settled in in this one though. Another right-hander starts to warm up in Syracuse's bullpen. Again, her pitch count getting up there. 
about to throw her 59th pitch here as Shea Smith digs in. Smith jumped all over a first pitch fastball in her last at bat. Again, just missing a two run home run. Skying a ball to the warning track as she lays off that fastball outside. Count one and oh. Shea walked in her first at bat before flying out in her last at bat. Looks to give the Lopes a two out base runner as she fouls that one straight back and out of play count evens up at one and one. One one offering, fastball misses up, count moves to two and one. So after a 9-0 shutout in five innings of play earlier today against San Diego State, it looks like the Lopes and the Orange are going to go the distance here tonight. Only a 2-2 score so far through four and a half innings of play. As that pitch is ripped in the air to center field, will it drop? It will not. As Syracuse's center fielder, Hansen makes the play. Impressive play made there by Hansen. An easy 1 2 3 inning for Romero against the heart of the Lopes order. We will head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It is still a 2 2 game here in Phoenix. Get the best gear to show off your Lope pride. Go to lopeshops.gcu.edu to find everything GCU. From the newest apparel to the coolest accessories, use promo code GCUTV25 to get 25% off just for being a GCU TV viewer. Let's paint the valley purple, Lopes up. I'll never let it be said that we don't take care of our viewers here on GCU TV. 25% off at the Lopes shop. They just added GCBC coffee. I'm certainly gonna order some of that. I drink enough coffee for sure that 25% off, that's gonna go the distance. Hey, I mean, you're drinking coffee right now too. Absolutely, it's a bit cold here. I can't believe I'm saying that. Coming from Minnesota, 55 degrees here in, in the beautiful sunny Phoenix. Yeah, that is fair. And again, like we said, we are giving uh, updates about the basketball game. It's still just a three point game. New Mexico stayed up on the Lopes, 31-28 with about four minutes to play in the first quarter. Well, as you see there on your television screen, Lexi Coons still pitching this one here for the Lopes. So like I mentioned earlier, Alexa Coons went five and an inning and a third, or five, five innings and a third in her last start against the 49ers just two nights ago. And it seems like she's about to at least tie that mark here tonight as she enters the bottom half of the fifth inning. Again, just a 2-2 game. All four runs coming very early in this game in the first two, inning and a half. Two, Anya Gonzalez. Yeah, two walks, two strikeouts, and of course that home run in the first. She's faced 16 batters and pitched 65 pitches. And Anya Gonzalez set to pinch hit here for the Orange. So she gets her first at bat on the night. New fresh face here for Alexa Coons. As the first pitch, fastball. It's gonna clip Gonzalez. Or excuse me, it's gonna be a foul ball off the nub of the bat called by the home plate umpire. Yeah, it looks like it just hit off the base of the bat there. So a tough break there for Gonzalez as she looks to get on. 0 1 pitch from Coons. Fastball popped in the air. It's going to get out of play, and the count quickly no balls and two strikes as that ball enters the stands. Fans, if you happen to catch a foul ball, please help us out and return it to the third base dugout. Thank you for your help. O2 from Coons. Fastball left up. Couldn't get Gonzalez to chase that one as the count moves to one and two. Coons pitch count up to 65 after that last pitch. 
again, has only allowed two hits, two walks, and two strikeouts. Gets a sign from Dietrich, one, two pitch. Is ripped in the air to left field. If it's fair, it is gone. It is a foul ball, so Gonzalez just missing, giving the Syracuse Orange a 3-2 lead on that swing as she clobbers that 1-2 fastball up and in from Coons. Yeah, she was all over that one, but just pulls it foul, plenty of distance. We'll see how that changes this next pitch. Coons going up and in with the fastball on that pitch. We'll see if she goes off speed and away here. As she looks to throw off Gonzalez. She goes with the fastball outside. Did she go? Yes, she did, says the first base umpire as Coons puts away Gonzalez for the first out of the inning. A huge strikeout there for Lexi Coons. So in that bat that nearly saw a, a near hit by pitch, a near home run. Alexa Coons able to come away with the punch out. So one away here. Coons has now retired five in a row as that fastball just misses on the outside corner. Count one and oh, Coons unable to get that call. Has been hitting the corners consistently all night. Sometimes she's gotten the call, sometimes she hasn't. Hasn't affected her so far. And she delivers the one oh pitch. That pitch on the outside corner, that one's called. That Moves the count to one ball and one strike. Yeah, that second one able to find the corner here on Mayfield. It'd be a 1-1 one -one count with one out. Mayfield flying out to left field in her first plate appearance. Or excuse me, flew out to center field. And she takes that fastball outside count, moves to two and one. No one currently warming up in the Lopes bullpen, so this game is in the hands of Alexa Coons who again has pitched spectacularly through the first three starts of her season. Two one offering, off speed pitch, did she go? No, she did not according to the third base umpire and the count moves to three balls and one strike. So Syracuse looking for a one out base runner as the top of the order looms on deck as Tehran Waits on the on-deck batter circle. Three-one offering. Fastball on the outside corner misses, and it's a one-out walk for Syracuse. We'll so. have a quick conversation here between catcher Maddie Dowdle and pitcher Alexi Coons. The third walk allowed by Coons as she looks to keep this runner stranded on first base. Again, Syracuse has not had a runner in scoring position since the bottom half of the second inning. Tehran 0 for 2 as that pitch is ripped down the left field line. It is a foul ball. So Syracuse with a couple of hard hit balls here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Unable to keep them fair. So Alexa Coons catching some big breaks here. Tehran reached on an error made by Smith at third base back in the first inning before flying out to right field in her last at bat. Runner leads off the first 0-1 pitch from Coons. Squaring to bunt there was Tehran. And unfortunately for her, she fouls that one off as the count moves to 0-2. So an, uh, unable to pull back in time as she makes contact with the ball on the way in from Coons. And the count moves to 0-2. Two pitch, fouled straight back. So Tehran able to stay alive. 
Alexa Coons pitch count up to 75 pitches after that last pitch. Gotta wonder how much longer she can go only on two days rest like we said. Coons gets the sign, here's the 0-2 offering. Fastball on the outside corner, just misses outside. Count moves to one and two. Hanson waits on deck, one, two pitch, cut on and missed in the dirt. Runner will advance to second base. They run out on the play, unable to, to advance to first base after the block in the dirt. Remember, first base was occupied at the moment. So runner on second now, two outs, and that will bring up Hansen. Biggest at bat of the ball game thus far for both Hansen and Coons. Syracuse looking to regain the lead that they lost in the top half of the second inning. Grand Canyon looking to keep it tied as we will enter the top half of 12, the sixth Taylor inning. Middle Lane. of the order due up for the Lopes. Well, and the Lopes have a couple of options in the dugout as far as pitchers go. Now they have Jesse Morrison and Brianna Aguilar who are both available this evening. Of course, Lexi Coons looking to get out of this one herself. We'll see if she can. So Hansen digs in, 0 for 2 in this one, flew out to right in her last at bat, grounded into a fielder's choice back in the first as that first pitch fastball misses upside or outside, count 1 and 0. Runner on second does have some speed. Could potentially score on a base hit here from Hansen. As that fastball just misses outside, count moves to two and zero. Oh. Alexa Coons not wanting to get to Bryce Holmgren or Alexis Kaiser here in the fifth inning. As that pitch is in there for a called strike count, moves to two and one. Both Holmgren and Kaiser with huge hits in this game, like we've mentioned before, Kaiser. The Syracuse offense thus far tonight with her two run blast back in the first. Breaking ball misses low and the count moves to three and one. Yeah, opportunity here for the orange, the runner in scoring position, two outs. We'll see if Hanson can get on. If she can, you couldn't ask for a better situation if you're Syracuse. The heart of your order due up with runners in scoring position. That ball is ripped in the outer right field but hit way too hard as it, as it will be caught out there by Olsen for the final out of the inning. So ball rocketed in the air to right field, stays up for Olsen. Inning over, we will head to the top half of the sixth inning. It is Grand Canyon two, it is Syracuse two. Stay right here on GCU TV. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. 
Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Back here on GCU TV, again, a 2-2 tie between Grand Canyon and Syracuse as we enter the top half of the sixth inning. A little update again, men's basketball only trailing New Mexico State 35-33 to at halftime. As you will get to check out the final seconds of that game. Hopefully right after this ball game ends. Again, middle of the order for the Lopes. As the four, five, and six hitters are set to come up, Kaylee Dietrich will lead things off. She's 0 for 2 so far in this one. Struck out looking back in the first. Popped up to short in the third. She's quickly ahead 1-0, and, and Alexa Romero still out there for Syracuse. Well, a couple of early mistakes by both Romero and Coons, but since it's been very quiet, very tidy from both. Romero delivers the 1-0 pitch. Pops in the air. Sky high, we'll see if it stays in play. It will not. So play unable to be made there by the third baseman Mayfield. So the count evens up at one and one. It'll be Dietrich, Holland, and Dowdle as the Lopes look to break this 2-2 tie. It's been tied since the top half of the second inning. A lot of zeros on that scoreboard. One one, fastball misses outside. Count moves to two and one. Romero up to 62 pitches now. Again, only allowing those four hits in her first two innings has been lights out in the past three innings. Two one offering, fastball clips the outside corner. Count evens up at two balls and two strikes. Romero gets the sign, 2-2 pitch. Fastball, sky in the air, left center field. Play will be made out there by the center fielder, Hansen. So quickly one away here. Lope still looking for a base runner as Romero is locked in at the moment. And that'll bring up Kaylee Holland. The designated hitter. So Holland one for two, singled in her first at bat in the first, excuse me, in the second inning, and then in the third inning, fouled out to the first baseman. So she's one for two in this one. Fastball misses outside, one and oh. So two very different games here this afternoon for the Lopes, a lopsided victory against SDSU. A nail biter here against Syracuse in the nightcap. Yeah, they were able to get the bats going early against San Diego State. Here, a bit of a battle between the two pitchers. So Holland count in her favor, two balls and no strikes. We'll see if she gets a pitch to drive here. Again, this game could potentially come down to one swing of the bat. Lopes a lot of power in their lineup. Holland included as the 2-0 pitch is popped in the air. That should be made as it is. As Holland fouls out to the catcher for Syracuse. Two up, two down. As Romero looks to continue her dominance here with another 1-2-3 inning. Two outs, nobody on. As left fielder Matty Dowdle digs in. Dowdle, one for one, has reached base on both plate appearances against Romero. Single in the second, walked to lead off the fourth. Fastball misses outside, one and out. Dowdle was left stranded at third base back in the top half of the fourth inning. And the dugout there trying to get something going. Again, the Lopes, the designated away team on their home turf here in this tournament play. Fastball fouled straight back, count evens up at one and one. Oh, 
If you're the Lopes, you cannot ask more than you got from Alexa Coons here tonight. Again, only on two days rest. Pitched wonderfully two days ago against the 49ers. Has pitched terrifically here tonight against the Orange. That ball is fouled off. Out of play in the seats. The count moves to one and two. A good snag over here in the seats by one of the fans. Able to reach up and snag it. And like a good listener, he's gonna return it to the third base dugout. Yeah, As exactly. our PA announcer said last inning. Getting a good listener. Good standing ovation from the, his fellow fans. Count out two and two now. Romero pitch count up to 70. Again, nobody warming up in the Syracuse bullpen. It is Romero versus Coons here tonight in Phoenix. 2-2 offering. Fastball ripped in the air, fairly deep right field. But the play is made and that will do it. Another 1-2-3 inning for Alexa Romero. We will head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. It is a still 2-2 game here in Phoenix on GCU TV. From the center of worship arts comes Canyon Worship 2018, a collection of songs written, recorded, and performed by GCU Worship Art students. Available now on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Go give it a listen. Now a lot of talented people here at GCU, both in the fine arts and production, in the worship arts, and of course, in the sports. Lots of very impressive talented people and you know a couple talented people up in the broadcast booth as well hopefully and just stroking our egos <laughs> left and right I like it I like it I do what I love can. it I do what I can and to no surprise Alexa Coons back out there on the mound this is going to be her longest outing of the season well she has looked dynamite so far of course that one hiccup in the first but since then She's been able to get out of trouble when she's needed to. She's been looking very, very strong. So like I said just moments ago, it is Coons versus Romero at the moment. We'll see who gives first. Heart of the order for Syracuse. This may be Alexa Coons' toughest inning to date. And she has Leading to face Frank Holmgren, Frank Kaiser, Frank. and Acevedo. Holmgren walked in the first, singled in the third. One for one has reached base on both plate appearances. Coons comes into the inning with 85 pitches as she lets that one go, plunking Holmgren right on the shoulder. She'll take first, so one pitch, and just like that, Syracuse has a runner in motion. So no outs, runner on first. That will bring up the very dangerous Alexis Kaiser. who again gave Syracuse a quick 2-0 lead in the bottom of the first with a tape measure, a two-run home run. Pitch runner for Syracuse on first base, number seven, Jessica Scalado. Now batting, designated hitter, Alexis Kaiser. First pitch to Kaiser in the dirt low, 1-0. Snap throw to first, not in time. So Coons having to be very, very careful here with Kaiser. Two run homer in the first. Rounded out sharply to short in her last at bat in the third. One swing of the bat here could change the whole complexion of the ball game. 1-0 pitch. Off-speed pitch broke beautifully there for Coons as the count moves to one and one. Nothing Alexis Kaiser could do about that pitch. As the pitching coach will have a meeting here with Alexis Coons. Probably some worry 
of her getting tired as that was her 86th pitch. Five innings pitched, two hits, two runs, three walks, and four strikeouts. And it's been very quiet from the orange on offense since the bottom of the first. And again, wanting to be very careful here with Kaiser. Well, rightfully so. They'll make sure that everybody's on the same page here. Holmgren takes her lead off the first. No outs, runner on first, 1-1 one, one pitch coming from Coons to Kaiser. Pitch misses low, count moves to two and one. Two one pitch. Fastball, ripped foul. As Kaiser gets right underneath that one, count moves to two balls and two strikes. Coons not wanting to leave anything up in the zone here for Kaiser to hit. Again, Holmgren on first after the first pitch hit by pitch. Has reached base all three times now. The walk, a single and a hit by pitch, respectively. As the 2-2 offering to Kaiser. Kaiser hits that one into the gap. Will it fall? It will not. Nicoletti back there in right field. Runs it down, makes a nice play. So Kaiser is retired for the second time here tonight. As there's now one out and a runner on first base, so a huge out there for Coons. As she retires the most dangerous person in Syracuse's order. Yeah, good snag out there in right field. The first baseman, Alex Acevedo. Give, Le give Lexi Coons just a little bit more wiggle room. So Alex Acevedo digs in, has walked, and has struck out looking in this one, so 0 for 1. Coons looking for the ground ball double play here to get herself out of troubles. Cut on and miss, throw down to second. Hey, she'll take that. Brilliant throw from Dietrich as she nails the runner. Holmgren trying to steal second. Second caught stealing of the night. Plenty of time there to apply that tag. Great throw, great catch, great play all around. So a load off of Alexa Coons' shoulders as she will now deal with Acevedo with two outs and nobody on. As that fastball misses outside count, runs even at one and one. Coons up to 91 pitches, season high. As the one one pitch, breaking ball drops in, just misses the outside corner count, moves to two and one. That pitch is roped to short. Easy play there for Smith across the diamond for the final out. And that'll do it here in the bottom of the sixth. So we're headed to the top of the seventh inning. Grand Canyon looks to take the lead in the top half of the seventh against Romero. It is 2-2 here on GCU TV. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together. But you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education. And you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. 
top half of the seventh inning here on GCU TV. The Lopes two and the Orange two. Alexa Romero dealing back and forth with Alexa Coons. We will see if the Lopes can get on the scoreboard. Top half of the seventh inning, remember the Lopes don't score and the Orange score in the bottom half of the seventh, that is it. The Lopes looking to get on the board here in the top half of the seventh. It'll be the bottom third of the order, seven, eight, nine. Taylor K digs in, 0 for two thus far against Romero. Again, Romero has been locked in since the second inning. That pitch is cut on, fouled off. Count quickly 0 and 1. One pitch slapped right into the Lopes dugout. Count quickly, nothing and two. Lopes dugout looking to get riled up here in the seventh inning. They look for it. a rally to start things off here in the top of the seventh. Yeah, both sides here trying to get back on the board. It looked like it was going to be an offensive affair through the second, but then both pitchers able to shut it down, and since it's been the tale of two pitchers. Okay, slaps that one. Straight back count remains 0-2. Taylor K just looking to get the ball in play. Looking to utilize her speed. As we get a quick mound visit here with Romero. As it looks like another right-hander is beginning to warm up in Syracuse's bullpen. There's been two instances tonight where Cuse's bullpen has gotten loose. We have yet to see it in effect yet as Romero has continued to silence the bullpen. Getting into and out of trouble so far in this one, 0-2 pitch. Misses low count one and two. We'll see if Alexa Coons comes back out for the bottom half of the seventh inning. It doesn't believe that anybody is up in the Lopes bullpen. So expect to see her back out in the bottom half of the seventh inning. As the 0-2 offering, 2K from Romero, just misses the outside corner and the count moves to two balls and two strikes. I would describe those hats if I could, Luke. Lopes really looking to get riled up here in the top of the seventh inning as that ball is slapped sharply on the ground to short. And the play is made there as the speedy K unable to beat that one out so quickly one away here in the top half of the seventh inning. Yeah, good throw across. Taylor K so incredibly fast but unable to outrun that throw. So Lily Bishop, the Lopes offense here tonight in this one, digs in. Remember the two run single tied things up in the top half of the second inning. The Riverside, California native Looks to put the Lopes up with one swing here. As the first pitch from Romero, fastball up, misses outside, count one and oh. pitch, fastball misses up, count two balls and no strikes. Lopes just looking to get a base runner on. Bishop gets on, expect to see a pinch runner here, get some speed on the base paths. Gianna Nicoletti waiting on deck. As the 2-0 offering from Romero. Bishop lays off and the count moves to three balls and no strikes. Pitch, fastball in there for a called strike, three and one. Bishop 
Definitely not getting the green light there. Lopes looking for a base runner here in the seventh. See if she gets the green light on three and one, looking for her pitch to drive. Bishop hits one high. And the center field, but the play will be made out there by the center fielder, Hanson. And just like that, there are two away here with nobody on in the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, just unable to get enough of it. Was under it enough that it flew just without enough distance the right into the waiting hands of the center fielder. Gianna but Gianna Nicoletti was pinched it for by Olsen in her last at bat has re-entered the game, singled in her only plate appearance back in the second inning. Looks to get on here with two outs. Has great speed as she swings through that fastball. Count quickly 0-1. There you see. There it is. Things are getting crazy in that Lopes bullpen. Yeah. They certainly know how to try to get things going. They got the rally caps going. They got going. the Mickey Mouse ears. They got the pom-poms. What are we doing sitting up here? We should, you know, we should try to do the broadcast from the dugout. Oh, it's, like it's way too cold down there, man. <laughs> way too cold down there. Now, now one and one on Nicoletti. Cut on and miss. Healthy hack there from Gianna, but she now falls behind on the count. One ball and two strikes. Romero looking to complete all seven innings in this one. We'll see how the Orange respond in the bottom half of the seventh against Alexa Coons. Looking to go the distance as well. One-two offering on the ground to second. Play made there easily by the second baseman, Tehran, and we will head to the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Syracuse Orange have a walk-off in their bones. Stay tuned here on GCU-TV. The Lopes Shop is proud to carry products from GCBC, the Grand Canyon Beverage Company. Enjoy this tasty line of coffee, tea, and energy drinks from GCU in the comfort of your own home. It's now available at lopeshops.gcu.edu slash GCBC. And of course, you can use that GCU TV 25 code we talked about earlier in order to get 25% off because you are a GCU TV viewer. Jack, do you have a, a go-to drink when it comes to GCBC? Mm. I think I talked about this with Phil on the women's basketball broadcast. I think it was the Caramel Monsoon. Oh, all right. not, not a bad drink. Yeah, I'm kind of a straight black coffee kind of guy myself. Really? The closer to motor oil it is, the better. Really? Interesting. I don't know if I could do black coffee. Don't, I, yeah, I don't think I could do that. You know, on a, on a cold 53 degree day, and you know, I can hear my folks from Minnesota laughing at me all the way from here. Yes, 53 degrees is pretty cold for Phoenix in February. Good cup of coffee is, hits the spot. So we'll see if Syracuse can walk things off here. The Lopes, Leading off the bottom again, of the for Syracuse. looking Number to keep 11, this tie and going to extra innings. Alexa Coons looking to complete an easy bottom half of the seventh inning. Again, nobody warming up in the Lopes bullpen. This is Alexa Coons' game to win or lose here, ladies and gentlemen. Nelly Cesarius Mayer, the shortstop for Syracuse, leading things off. As the first pitch from Coons, fastball on the outside corner, called strike one, count 0 and 1. So it'll be Cesarius Mayer, Martin, and McCulloch for Syracuse. Again, looking for the walk off victory, looking for their first victory of the season. On the outside corner, called strike, count quickly, no balls, and two strikes. O2 delivery. 
Misses up count one and two. So Alexa Coons pitch count at 95. She's gonna break 100 in this inning, presumably, uh, Luke. Yeah, well, she's been very good for them. And we'll see if she can carry the team through this inning to extras. One, two delivery, fastball on the outside corner for a called strike three. Placed beautifully there by Coons as she records her fifth punch out tonight. So one away here, nobody on. And that will bring up Tony Martin. Martin 0 for two, struck out back in the second. Lined out to Torville at second, back in the fourth. With the ball hard in her last at bat, as the first pitch off speed, misses up and away, count one and oh. So Alexa Coons, a combined six and two thirds innings pitched Thursday night against the 49ers. Looks to break that going by going seven here tonight. Uh, she's gonna get, have to get past the bottom third of Syracuse's order. Count quickly 2-0 and here on Martin. Well, she's off to a good start here in the bottom of the seventh. We'll see if Martin can get a, her pitch, her, her pitch to hit. Hitters pitch here on 2-0, and fastball misses outside and the count moves to 3-0. and Coons not wanting to allow a base runner here in the bottom of the seventh. Again, both teams desperate for base runners in this one, so don't expect Martin to be swinging here on 3-0. and and she doesn't, she lays off her ball four pitch inside. And the winning run is now on first base. Lexi Coons with six punch outs on Thursday afternoon against Charlotte. She has five tonight. So Machelik digs in, ball in the gap, could potentially win this ball game. Outfielder's playing deep right in front of the warning track as we speak. And she squares around a bunt, lays it down, and it will trickle foul. So Martin heads back to first, count quickly 0-1 on Machelik. Leone Mayfield waiting on deck. As the 0-1 offering from Coons is bunted. Foul again, right in front of home plate. As the count quickly moves to no balls and two strikes. So we'll see if McCulloch goes with the bunt here again on two strikes. It'll be interesting to see with a runner on first base and one out. Alexi's doing her part to try to get anything on the ground. 0 2 pitch. Fastball up. Well, that one getting away from her. Good stop there. Keep that in, you know, keep that uh, in the hands of Kaylee Dietrich. One, two offering, and the dirt count moves to two and two. Kaylee Dietrich keeping the runner at first base honest. Big pitch coming here from Coons, does not want to go full here on McCulloch. Two, two, fastball ripped foul right over the Orange's dugout. That ball was scolded. Boone's looking for the ground ball here. Would love to get out of the inning 
with a double play. Two two pitch. Fastball on the ground to third. It is fair. Fielded there. And they are going to get the twin killing inning ending double play. A huge play for the Lopes as we're going to get some free softball here in Phoenix. Extra innings here on GCU TV. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. GCULopes.com. Back here on GCU TV, and like I said, Luke, free softball, extra innings here at GCU Softball Stadium in Phoenix. And it's been a very impressive showing by both picture, pitchers, Romero and Coons. And of course, you know, at the beginning of the game, we were thinking it was going to be an offensive affair. But after that, both pitchers shutting it down. We're going to go to the eighth, knotted up 2-2. Two, two. Now remember, in extra innings, rules change. Each inning will start out with a runner on second base to speed up the process, potentially. So the Lopes will have a runner in scoring position at second base with nobody out as Sierra Smith digs in. Still looking for her first hit of the night, 0 for 3 coming into the set bat. As the runner leads off of second, first pitch taken outside, count 1-0. and oh. So this changes everything, basically, having a runner in scoring position to start out the inning. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game in extra innings just because you do have that runner in scoring position. A base hit could bring them in, potentially. 1-0 pitch, Smith lays down a bunt, pops it up in the air, so the bunt does not happen as planned for the Lopez as that bunt is popped in the air, caught there by the catcher. No advancement from the runner at second, and there is now one out in the inning. Well, it's the right play. You want to get that one down on the ground. You don't care if you make it to first. You just want to advance that runner from second. Unfortunately, didn't get enough of that ball. Pops it straight up. The catcher able to step up and make an easy play, hold the runner to second. So Torville digs in, fastball taken up, and outside count 1-0. and oh. Both the Lopes and the Orange unable to get a runner in scoring position in each of the last four innings. So the Lopes designated a runner in scoring position here in extra innings. That ball's popped up, could potentially be in play. It is going to be dropped by McCulloch behind the dish. Yeah, just lost it as she was tra tracking it in the stadium lights, unable to make the play. So a huge break there for the Lopes as that could have potentially been out number two. Instead, it's just a strike count evens at one and one for one of their hottest hitters. Torvel looking to give the Lopes the lead here in the eighth. One, one offering. Fastball misses outside, count moves to two balls and one strike. Two one. Torville hits one high, hits it deep. It is going to be caught at the warning track. By Martin, but the runner does move to third base. So two outs, runner on third, Torville. 
Almost giving the Lopes a two run lead with one swing of the bat. Moves the runner over to third base. The Lopes 90 feet away from taking a three to two lead in this one. And that will bring up the shortstop Shea Smith. Shea Smith. Smith just missed, connecting for a two run home run back in the third inning. As this could potentially be it for Romero. We'll see what happens here. A lot of mound visits in this one, Luke. Yeah, you know, both pitchers doing a really good job getting out of trouble. Some of that is because of good advice from both the pitching coaches and the catchers. They're utilizing those visits to the circle very well. They're getting out there and calming down their pitchers at the right moments. We're gonna see here if the Syracuse Orange are gonna be able to calm this one down enough to keep the Lopes from scoring. So another huge situation in this ball game. Run around third, two outs. Shea Smith at the dish. Romero kicks and delivers. First pitch up, ball one, one and oh. Fastball, clips the outside corner count, moves to one and one. One, one pitch. Fastball misses up, count moves to two and one on Smith. Smith 0 for two with a walk, walked back in the first inning. That's the two one offering. Misses up, count moves to three and one. So second and first are open. So Romero not needing to give in to Smith here. And with the base open, she could pitch to Dietrich who waits on deck. 3-1 pitch to Smith. Fastball up and she works a walk, so runners on the corners and two outs. Romero pitch count up to 97 after that last pitch. As Dietrich digs in. Yeah, probably the right choice there, Shea Smith. Such an offensive weapon for this Lopes team. Hold on. It'll allow Kaylee Dietrich to come up to the plate with runners on the corners. There will be a quick conference in the circle. Again, nobody warming up in Syracuse's bullpen. So this game rides and dies with Alexa Romero, as well as it does with Alexa Coons. Number five, the catcher, Haley Dietrich. First pitch to Dietrich, up and in, ball one. Runners lead off third and first. 1-0 pitch to Dietrich. Fastball ripped in the air to left field and that ball is gonna be caught out there by Martin for the final out of the inning. So Romero, just like she's done all night, gets herself into and out of trouble. We will head to the bottom half of the eighth inning here in extra innings. It is still a 2-2 tie here on GCU TV. What a game. Yeah, absolutely, what a game indeed. It's been the duel between two very impressive pitchers. Alexa Coons is gonna head out there having pitched 109 pitcher, or pitches to face 26 batters. She's allowed two runs on two hits, but they came right at the beginning in the first. Those two runs on the two run blast to left. She here finds herself having to bail out her team and give them yet another chance to score force the ninth. She's gonna do everything she can to do it. 
comes into the inning with 109 pitches. 109 pitches. We'll see how long she goes in this one. You can only imagine GCU's got to start warming up someone in their bullpen. Well, you know what? If she's feeling it, they'll keep, keep her out there as long as she wants. She's pitching absolutely spectacular. The runner on second base for Syracuse will be number 19, Logan Paul. So again, a runner will start on second base. And remember, Syracuse scores here. They win the ball game. They are the designated home team. Third baseman, Leilani Mayfield. And Mayfield will dig in. Leilani Mayfield for Syracuse. Comes into this at bat, 0 for 1. Flew out to left and has walked as she looks to bunt the runner over to third, snap throw to second. Good thinking there from Dietrich, unable to get the runner. So just like Romero had to get herself into and out of trouble, Alexa Kuhn's gonna have to do the same thing if she wants to see a ninth inning here in Phoenix. Fastball misses low, count quickly, two balls and no strikes. Yeah, and she's got her work cut out for her. runner in scoring position. A single could potentially win it here for Syracuse. So they look to hand the Lopes their third loss of the season. Lopes looking for their third win of the season as that fastball misses just outside. Coons unable to get that call as the count moves to three balls and no strikes. doing her best to avoid letting Mayfield lay down the bunt. Third baseman, Sierra Smith coming way in. Coons with the throw over to first in time. But the runner will advance to third. The 3-0 pitch. Mayfield still lays down the bunt, executes it perfectly, runner on third base with one out. And just like that, Syracuse is one base hit away from winning this ball game. Infield most definitely coming in on this play. Second baseman, number four, Gabby Turan. We'll see how Gabby Turan approaches this at bat. And again, hit listen this one, 0 for 2. Excuse me, 0 for 3 in this one as she lays off that fastball count 1 and 0. Reached on an error by Smith back in the first, flew out to right in the third, struck out swinging back in the fifth. one 0 pitch. Check swing, fouled straight back. Count moves to 1 and 1. Big break there for Kuhn as the count now evens up. And a game that looked like it was going to be a battle of the two offenses early on turned out to be a very classic pitching duel between Alexa Coons and Alexa Romero. As that pitch is ripped down the line, will it stay fair? It will not as the count moves to one and two. So Tehran unable to keep that ball fair as she hooks it foul down the left field line. Well hit. Yeah, very good contact just ahead of it. Ball in the air potentially wins the game for Syracuse. Coons ever needed a strikeout, it's right here. One, two pitch. Chopped up the middle and through the hole for a base hit. It is a walk off RBI single for Gabby Tehran and Syracuse. Takes this one by a final score of three to two in eight innings here at GCU Softball Stadium. So after an epic pitching duel between Alexa Coons and Alexa Romero, Romero will walk away with the victory as the Lopes walk away with this one as a hard luck loser. They split the doubleheader, however, after a commanding 9-0 win against San Diego State earlier today, a 
nail biter here tonight against Syracuse. Come up short, 3-2 loss in extra innings. Now Lexi Coons, almost a perfect evening, seven and a third innings pitched. Three hits, three runs, four walks, five strikeouts, and 117 total pitches. Very impressive. Unfortunately, just unable to finish it here for the Lopes as that base hit up the middle is going to be the difference maker. Romero with eight innings pitched. He allowed two runs on four, four hits. She had 103 pitches. Very impressive showing from both. The Syracuse Orange just able to get the last laugh. A great day of softball here in Phoenix. Thanks for tuning in. Softball's next home game will take place against Michigan State on February 22nd at 4.30 p.m. right here in Phoenix. Be sure to tune in into GCU TV to catch all the action and be sure to follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. On behalf of everybody at GCU TV alongside Luke Larkin, I am Jack O'Hara. Have a great night and always go Lopes.